All right, bro. Look, I know it's like a tutorial and everything, but I, I just got done like watching YouTube and apparently so if you're if you're watching full screen on YouTube right now, then, you know, like like turn off full screen. There are words that will trigger the like and subscribe button to light up. Right. They probably did already. So if I say something like, you know, smash the like button and then I say, like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, the buttons are might light up if they don't. I don't know. Probably like YouTube is testing it like out to different users, but Bro, it happened. It was so cool. <laughs> it was great. All right. So yeah, it, I, I don't know. Just unrelated thing that I found pretty cool. Um, but this tutorial is about tags and attributes, or more specifically, why you shouldn't use these things. These are values, right? We have a bool value, brick color, C frame color, ints, number, object, ray, string, and vector. So basically, these are inst instant instances which can hold different values, right? So, of course, bool value holds a boolean, true or false. This will hold a brick color, true or false. C frame, true or false, call the three, true or false, so on and so on. In the, in the description, it says it's useful to share information across multiple scripts, right? So, if I had, let's say, a game, right, which had different phases, right? I could have an, a string value that says, like, you know, phases, right? And then the value could be start. Then maybe it could be, you know, in, intermission, then it could be end, then it could be like, you know, re like something like that, right? So values are actually pretty helpful in that regard. And also data storing as well, right? So if you have like, if, if you if you like want players to have values, then you can give them, you know, like, like int values or whatever. And then you could data store, um, you know, you could take data from data stores and then place them inside those values. And that's what that's what I did. However, I did not know about tags and attributes. The, the very first thing you should know is that everything has tags and attributes, literally everything. Workspace, players, yeah, tags and attributes. Starter GUI, tags and attributes. Base plate, tags and attributes. Camera, terrain, tags and attributes. Um, they're properties and they're, they're at the very bottom. In short, a tag is kind of like just a, a piece of text you put on like an instance, right? So for example, if I added a part right here, right? And then let's say this was meant to be a button, which is supposed to give me cash, right? What I could do is I could just give this part a tag called button and then I hit enter and now this part has a tag named button and like like obviously like you know we could just rename this part to button and then like check in a script if this part is a button however in some cases that doesn't work because sometimes you just might have like two instances that are named the same and maybe are like the same thing right um and so this is just a nice way to actually understand um what is what because I don't believe tags can be modified by the clients. Like, I don't, I don't believe there's, like, some exploit that happens. Um, if there is, of course, in the comments, let me know. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's any benefit of using these. Because I feel like when you put in a lot of instances, they just kind of clog up, you know, like, just uh, the Explorer menu. Like, the workspace or, I don't know, like, some folder that you may have. I don't see why you would use those over tags and attributes right again if there's some reason if there's like some deadly exploit going around let me know but that's just my per like perspective on things so yeah this is a tag and inside a script you can like assign tags and you can check if it has a tag right um and then attributes are like tags but you can also add values right so if i add an attribute um i can give it a name so if this button was going to give me cash i could say like cash to give right and then, you know, all of these values, I'll make it equal a, a number. I'll make it save. And then now we have an attribute called cash to give, which inside a script, we can add attributes where we can, um, I'm not sure if we can remove attributes. I think we can, but we can get the values of attributes and we can change the values of attributes. So for example, let's say cash to give is 10. I don't know, right? Um, and then inside a script, what I could do is, I'll actually add a, a click detector because we want to know whenever the part is clicked, right? And then inside the click detector, I'll put a script and I'll just say script.parent, you know, being the click detector dot clicked or it was like mouse, mouse click, connect function. And then it gives us the player who clicked on the part. And then what I could do is I could say, okay, um, local cache to give is going to be equal to, and then we want to get the parts, um, cache to give attribute, right? So I'll just say, okay. Um, I'll actually make a variable for the part. So I'll just say local part is equal to part. 
damn it, is equal to script.parent.parent. .parent. So script.parent.parent. .parent. Um, and what we could do is we could actually check if the part has a tag named button. So we could say, um, you know, if part has tag button, then, I don't know, then, then we'll do something. Then re return, I don't, I don't know. Just if part has tag button, then you can do something end, right? Um, but then, you know, whenever the mouse is actually clicked, then we'll say local cache to give is equal to part, get attribute, like so. We'll get the, there we go, it autofills it for me. Cache to give, and so now this is going to be equal to whatever cache to give is, right? And then we'll just say print cache to give. And then what we could do is we could also just increase cache to give by two, right? So I could just say, okay, then, so after, you know, we clicked, we, we printed out the cache that the player gets, you know, quote unquote, um, I'll say part set attribute cache to give. And then after we put in the name of the attribute, then we put a comma and then we give it the new value. So the new value is going to be the current value of cache to give plus two. So then I'll just get the current value of cache to give plus two, right? I'll add some spaces here to make it look nicer. Um, and yeah, um, so then if I were to play the game right now, I believe it's going to keep increasing. So, okay, I'm going to open up the part in the workspace just so you can see. Um, yeah, so over here, cast to give us 10. Then I click. And let's see. Nothing is happening for some reason. Let's see. Let's see why that is. Uh, mouse click connect function. Maybe, maybe it's this. Let's see. Maybe maybe, maybe this line isn't. Uh, local cache to give equals part. Okay, cache to give. Print cache to give. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I think it was the tagline. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, something something with the tag. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but yeah, so part. Um, cache to give is... Yeah, now it's 12. Now it's 14. Now it's 16. As you can see, it keeps printing it out. So whenever I click, it prints out the attribute, then it adds two to the attribute, right? So now we're getting the attribute and changing the attribute. Um, the other thing was with the button is weird. So we could just say something like, when it's clicked, we could print... No, no, actually, no. we could just say like, okay, if part hashtag button, or actually, no, if not part hashtag button, so if part doesn't have the tag button, then we'll just return. We're not doing this function, right? Um, and part should have the tag name button. Let's see. Yeah, should be fine. So if I check it out right now, 10, 12, 14. Okay, okay, I see. So yeah, I think we just formatted the code wrong for a bit. <laughs> but yeah, everything seems to be working with the attributes and tags. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. I guess as to show you a couple more stuff, um, let's see, part dot... I just want to see if there's anything else that actually happens with tags or attributes. Um, I don't think there's anything here. Let's see. Attribute changed. So there's an attribute. So whenever an attribute changes, fires whenever an attribute is changed on the instance. And then I think that it gives you the attribute. Yeah, so it gives you the attribute that changes. Um, let's see. Um, tag. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's anything here. As for functions... There is an, you can, yeah, you can add a tag. You can remove a tag. Um, let's see, there's also a, oh, there's so much stuff. <laughs> um, uh, you can change the, or no, you, you can get a signal whenever an attribute changes. It's a get attribute. Yeah, so get attribute changed signal. So fires an event that fires whenever a given attribute changes, right? Um, so so I, I, like I said before, right? Um, what we did was, you know, uh, attribute changed so this happens when any single attribute is changed right but then get attribute but then get attribute changed um only fires when like our specified attribute is changed so when the given attribute changes right um so yeah that's basically i guess all you need to know um i guess as a last thing the way you remove them is for tags you just click on this for attributes you just click on this just like that i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna delete a part um, again, just to test it out, uh, smash the like button, 
subscribe to the channel. So yeah, those buttons should have been lit up by now. If they're not, I probably sound insanely stupid. <laughs> um, but alright, enough of the assets, and we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.